Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this video, we will walk users through the first time setup and configuration of the MVI 56E AFC module. ProSoft Technology's in-chassis flow computer solution allows you to monitor gas and liquid meters for flow rates, accumulator values, and other calculation results. This solution eliminates the need for multiple RTUs and standalone flow computers for a multi-well pad application, allowing you to optimize your resources with up to 16 meter runs. In this scenario, let's say we have a well pad with multiple pumping units, each with a flow meter we need to take readings from, calculate flow rates, and then transfer the results to our PLC for use in the application ladder program. Here is all the hardware we'll be working with, along with their respective IP addresses. We'll go through all the steps required to make this happen. And this will entail the following steps. Downloading all files and installing EAFC Manager software. Incorporating sample add-on instructions into our RS Logix or Studio 5000 project file. And finally, First time setup and configuration of the MVI 56E AFC module using EAFC Manager. Let's begin. So I have my new MVI 56E AFC module installed in my ControlLogix rack. The first thing I need to do is download and install the EAFC Manager software from the ProSoft Technology website. This is a free application that's used to configure the MVI 56E AFC module and will allow you to do all the necessary configurations and mapping to make the module an integral and useful part of your program. And while we're on the product page for the AFC, we'll go ahead and grab the AOI file so that we can set up the module in our Control Logix program. Once we have the files downloaded, go ahead and install the EFC Manager to your PC by following the prompts. The AOI file we downloaded is a zipped folder that contains the main AOI as well as four additional AOIs, one for each of the main meter types. This would include linear gas, linear liquid, differential liquid, and differential gas. We'll go through what each of these are and when you would want to use them. Next, we'll open up RS Logix 5000, or if you're using Studio 5000, that's fine. You can create a new project or bring the AFC into an existing project. I have a new project already set up and running here, so we'll start by bringing in the MVI 56E AFC. In the Controller Organizer menu, expand I.O. Configuration, select the 1756 backplane, right-click and choose New Module. We'll select the generic 1756 module and click Create. On the New Module window, we'll give the module a name. MVI 56E AFC, COM format should be set to data int, select the slot where the AFC module resides in your rack, for me it's in slot 2. Finally, the connection parameters should match what I have here. And if you need to make an adjustment to the RPI setting for your application, you should do that as well. It is not recommended you use an RPI setting below 5 MS. When you're finished, click OK and close. Now we have the MVI 56E AFC module under the I.O. configuration folder. Next, we'll bring in the add-on instructions. So drill down through the Tasks folder and open up Main Routine. Right-click on any empty rung and choose Import Rung. We'll browse to the location of the rung files that we downloaded and extracted. As you can see, we have a different meter type for both gas and liquid, as well as a linear meter type for both products as well. Be sure to choose the proper AOI for the type of meter that you're using. Section 3.1 of the MVI 56E AFC Module Setup and Configuration Guide has a comprehensive walkthrough for selecting the correct meter type. Generally though, for a turbine meter, you would select linear. For an orifice meter, you would select differential. V-cone and wedge type meters would also be differential. Vortex, ultrasonic, and Coriolis can either be linear or differential depending on your primary output. In my example, I have two meters. I'll be getting readings of differential gas pressure from a differential or orifice meter, so I will use the differential gas AOI. 
In the Import Configuration window that opens, if you click on the Tags section, you can see the controller tags that will be imported with the AOI. Ensure that the local X tag references are pointed at the correct slot number and that the meter numbers are also set correctly so that no two meters have the same meter number. Once you're done, just click OK. I also want to be able to get data from a turbine meter measuring NGL. So I'll also bring in the linear liquid AOI. These meter specific ladder files can all be placed in the same rung and each AOI imports with a different meter number of 1 to 4. After the imports have finished, there is now a third location to update the meter number. Once you have imported the AOIs for all meters in your project, you will need to import the main MVI 56E AFC AOI. It's important to put this AOI on its own rung. So just select the next open rung down and click Import Rung and go through the process again. Again, ensure that the local X reference here in the Import Configuration window is pointed at the correct slot number. Once this is done, we can see all the user-defined data types as well as the controller tags that will be used by the sample program. Now is a good time to save your project. Our Rockwell project is pretty much set at this point. The next step will be to use the EAFC Manager software to configure the module to match what we have set up here. We installed EAFC Manager earlier. If you go through the Start menu, you would browse under ProSoft Technology and choose the EAFC Manager. Once it opens, we'll go to the file and create a new project. Select New. MVI 56 EAFC, AFC 16 meters. The first thing to do is configure the overall settings for the site. And these settings will apply to the entire project. From the Project tab, select Site Configuration, and this will open the Site Configuration dialog box. And right at the top, we have the site name. You can change this if needed. The primary and virtual Modbus slave IDs are used for access of process, configuration, and historical data for the site and all meters. The default should be fine, but you can change it to any address from 1 through 247. The virtual slave is used for more efficient data polling, and setting its address to any value greater than 0 will enable it. End of day and end of hour minutes specify when archives will be created. By default, zero minutes means midnight, and you can go from zero to 1,439. Zero for hour creates hourly archives at the top of each hour. There is also barometric pressure and site options and pass-through settings. The next thing to do is to set our communication parameters. The network, serial 1 and 2 buttons allow you to configure the setting for each of those ports. We'll click the network button, which opens the configuration window for the Modbus TCP port. This is where you can enter the IP address that you want the AFC module to use in your application. Now we'll need to connect via its default IP address of 192.168.0.251 for the initial download, so we'll leave it at the default for now. Mask bits indicate the network prefix length of the physical interface. 24 bits is the equivalent of the typical 255.255.255.0 network mask in dot decimal form. Port 502 is the standard Modbus TCP port. We have different module settings and whitelist options as well. At the top, you can see there are four server tabs. These allow you to set different configurations up for four servers. So if you do have multiple configurations, you can just select the tab and check Enable. The Advanced tab contains more advanced web options. The web interface you see here is a different address than the network interface. This is used for direct access to the module for firmware updates, viewing module information, and so forth. It's not a Modbus TCP address for use in the application. One important feature that we will use is the orphaned connection timeout. By setting this to any number other than zero, the module will maintain its current connection even if the connection parameters have been changed in the configuration. 
and we'll use this to change the network IP address to what we want to use in our application, but only once we've made an initial connection to the module using the default IP. So we'll return to this later. I'm not changing anything else, so I'll just hit OK. As for Serial 1 and Serial 2, when you click on those, you get a window with the serial settings for the two serial ports. Port 1 is used for Modbus communication so that the EAFC Manager software can always communicate with the primary slave. The Modbus Master option is only available on serial port 2. Just make your changes and hit Done. You can hit Done on the Site Configuration window, and this will close the window and temporarily save the settings. You will need to save your project before closing EAFC Manager though, otherwise all your changes will be discarded. Once all of our site information is configured, we can move on to configuring the meters that you'll be gathering data from. This section will cover five distinct steps. We'll be configuring meter identification and stream identification parameters, meter type, product group, units and primary input, common parameters, application specific parameters, and configuring the port settings. Meter and stream selection are just so you can choose between different meter and stream configurations that you might have. I have two meters, each with a single stream, so I'll set up my differential gas meter under meter 1 and my linear liquid meter under meter 4. It's important that the meter numbering in EAFC Manager matches the meter numbers that we specified in the add-on instructions. By clicking on meter identification, you can enter in all pertinent information for your various meters. Under meter type, you can select differential and linear. Essentially, if you choose differential, you're choosing the AGA3 standard. And if you select linear, you're choosing the AGA7. For the broad range of other meters available today, your selections will depend on the output generated by the meter. Refer to your meter's specs and section 1.1 of the MVI 56E AFC module setup and configuration guide for more information. For meter 1, I'll choose differential. And for meter 4, I'll choose linear. Next, you will choose the product group. For most applications, either gas, Crude oils or NGLs or LPGs will be the typical choices, but for special applications there are other options as well. Next, the system of units you want to use, US or metric, and finally the primary input, pulse count or pulse frequency for linear meters, and differential pressure or flow rate for differential meters. The parameters you choose in this section will determine what other parameters EAFC Manager will display. And you'll notice that as I make changes here, the displayed parameters also change. Only the parameters that pertain to your meter type and instrumentation and its primary output will be displayed. The common parameters apply to all applications, so they don't change according to your selections up here and should be configured. They include reference temperature and reference pressure, as well as the units to be used for accumulators and flow rates. The application-specific parameters are those that are contingent on your selections up above. For instance, you could have the frequency flow threshold and pulse input rollover for a linear pulse count meter, or you could see differential pressure threshold and V-cone wedge discharge coefficient for a differential diff pressure meter. If you set gas as the product group, you'll have the gas parameters to configure here, or the liquid parameters if you chose liquid. If you chose a linear meter, such as a turbine, you'll have the k-factor characteristics here, where you can select the units for the k-factor. I'll click the process input button, where I'll set the valid input ranges. Here I can enable high and low alarm thresholds. So if I get input data that's outside the configured range, the MVI 56E AFC will trigger an alarm for that process input. If you're setting up a gas meter run, you'll need to configure the molar analysis settings. First, click the Analysis Config button in the Meter Configuration box, and under the Component Selection tab, you can select all the components to be analyzed. 
Now we suggest that you select all because this is what the sample add-on instruction expects. You would also need to set the normalization total error tolerance value and click OK. Next, click on the analysis button under stream one. And here you'll set the concentration percentage for each of the components that you'll be analyzing. The percentage of each component is expressed as a number between zero and one. So for example, a molar fraction of 0.4 would mean a concentration of 40%. Ideally, the fractions that you enter here should all add up to 100%. When you're done, you click done. Now that our meter runs are all configured, we're ready to connect to the MVI 56E AFC module and download our configuration. You can connect using either the Ethernet or serial ports. I'll connect over Ethernet. Just plug into the Ethernet port on the module and connect the cable to your PC or a switch on your network. Under the Communications tab, select Local Port Settings. And I'll use the TCP settings. And for the first download, the module still has all its default settings. Click the Copy to Local button and the IP address field should populate with whatever IP address we configured for that server. In order to connect, your PC will have to be on that subnet with the AFC. Click Connect, and if all goes well, you should see that the COM link is open. Click OK to close the window. Now click Project and select Download Project. If you've made any changes since your last save, you'll be asked if you want to save the project. Next, the login window will come up. Enter a 3 under Operator Number. This is the default administrator login. You can then click OK and the download will proceed. Click OK when the transfer is finished. We'll set the permanent IP address now. This is also a good opportunity to show that a full project download is only required the first time a project is downloaded to the module. Afterwards, each configuration section has its own read and write buttons. So changes can be made to these sections and then be written to the module without having to download the entire project. So if I go to the Network Advanced tab and set the Orphan Connection Timeout to one minute, I can apply this and then click Write to change just this part of the configuration. Then we'll return to Server 1 and change the IP to what we'd like to use in our application. And again, click Apply and Write. This will change the module's network IP address. Note that our connection will be lost after we do this. We'll have to switch to the new IP and its associated subnet in order to reconnect. At this point, our configuration is complete. We can return to RS Logix, go to WhoActive, and download the project to our Rockwell processor and set the program to run mode. Just a tip, once your meter is enabled, you will not be able to change the meter type, the product group, etc. To make changes to this section, you'll have to open up Control Options and deselect Module Enable. You would then write this change to the AFC module in order to deactivate it. Then you'll be able to edit the meter configuration again, set the module back to Enable, and write that. And that does it for this configuration. We've just scratched the surface of the options and capabilities available with the MVI 56E AFC. So if you have any questions or would like more information about the AFC and how to use it, visit our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. Our technical support staff can also get you any information you might need about the AFC. Until next time, Happy training.